So, uh, hello and welcome to our fourth class. And the topic of our fourth class is death in general. And uh, uh, the examples of local or cellular death. And we will discuss necrosis and uh, apoptosis today. First of all, we should uh, give the definition of necrosis and we will start from the cellular death. So, necrosis, it is a one of the variants of local or cellular death and according to it we may see uh, death of cell cells or group of cells or tissue part of the tissue or part of the organ and we may see uh, that necrosis develops under the influence of some uh, pathological factors the etiological factors of necrosis you may see on these slides you, first of all, it may be traumatic factors, and sometimes we call it like physical or chemical agency, which may uh, have some influence to the tissues and cells, and this influence will lead to a death of the cell. Also, it, is, it may be a toxic type of necrosis, and the toxic type of necrosis may occur with the action of toxin or bacterial or another major uh, and uh, we may see it in result of poisoning by mushrooms, in poisoning of uh, some acids, or in poisons of each or other poisons. The third variant is tropho-neurotic, and it is associated with impaired microcirculation and tissue innervation in chronic diseases. Uh, it, this type of necrosis is typical for degenerative diseases. For example, we may see trophoneurotic uh, necrosis in case of diabetes and uh, in case of uh, alteration of peripheral nerves in our body and we will see formation of ulcers, we will see formation of other um, area of necrosis in our bodies. Uh, the fourth type is allergic and allergic type uh, associated with immunopathological reactions uh, and also we may see that uh, in our organism we may see accumulation of some immune complexes which will lead to injury of our own our tissues so and under the influence of uh, antibodies we will see uh, growing of necrotic tissue and the type of this necrosis will be allergic uh, and the vascular type of necrosis, it is one of the most uh, important for us because uh, we may see a lot of ischemical heart diseases, for example, and um, all of them associated with blockage of arteries or uh, decrease of arterial supply to an organ, and we may see formation of necrotical area in these organs and in these areas. So vascular type necrosis or infarction is really important for your medical life because you will have uh, a lot of different cases with this type of necrosis. According to the mechanism, the, all of necrosis may be divided into direct and indirect. In case of direct necrosis, we may see uh, action of the pathological agency to the cell and uh, we will see uh, for example it may be like a beat or uh, may making of a wound of a knife by knife so we will see uh, damage of cell by ag uh, alteration agency in case and uh, it may be traumatic and toxic type of necrosis so we may see it in the first uh, upper part of the slide and indirect type of necrosis associated with uh, some uh, additional reactions which may happen in our organism. For example, in case of vascular type of necrosis, we may see blockage of uh, artery by the thrombus, and uh, the thrombus couldn't lead to necrosis of the cells and couldn't lead to damage of them, but hypoxy can. And uh, hypoxia will uh, be a result of thrombosis, and that, uh, and uh, hypoxia will lead to deep injury and death of these uh, cells. So that's why this mechanism is indirect. So we may see influence of the 
a pathological factor, not all to the cell, but for the, some mechanism of nutrition or some other mechanism which will lead to injury. Uh, all necrosis uh, have special stages, and all of these stages you may see of this, on the slide. The first stage is stage of paranecrosis or paranecrotical changes. Paranecrotical changes, it is only one stage of necrosis which could be reversible and we may see fully recovery of the tissue if we stop alterative factor here. So sometimes uh, it may be associated with some reversible degenerations. For example, mucoid swelling will be a good uh, example. Uh, cloudy degeneration also possible for paranecrotical changes. And after it, uh, we may see an accumulation of actions uh, of alterative factor and we will see some necrobiosis changes. And uh, uh, the necrobiosis associated with irreversible degenerations, uh, most of all, we will see uh, changes in the cell cytoplasma, in the nuclei, in all other organelles of the tissue. And after necrobiosis, we will see cell death. And uh, it is really difficult to uh, eliminate or differentiate uh, necrobiosis and cell death because we have same morphological manifestations. But uh, for theoretical um, knowledge, you should uh, know that these sta uh, stages uh, have some difference. And in case of cell death, we, the most typical changes will be associated with changes of nuclei, mostly with disappearing of nucleus here. So, and after it, we will see the last stage of necrosis, stage of autolysis. So, in the result of autolysis, we will see disappearing of a cell out of uh, their places. And we will see nothing in place of this cell. And after it, we will see inflammatory reaction in on place of necrosis. Morphological changes or morphological scenes of necrosis associated with changes of two most important organelles, with changes of nuclei and changes of cytoplasma. The changes of nuclei uh, happens in uh, four stages, three stages. We are karyopycnosis. Uh, and karyopycnosis associated with decreasing of the size of nuclei and after it we will see condensation of chromatin in result of this stage. After the chromatin condensation we will see uh, dividing of this chromatin to some fragments or some particles and this stage will be karyorexis. Uh, in after karyorexis we will see disappearing of nuclei or karyolysis. So these three stages are really important for morphological manifestation of necrosis. Sometimes on the histological level we will see only karyopycnosis in the cell and it will manifest about necrosis. Sometimes we will see karyorexis and it have also manifest about necrosis. But the most typical situation when we will see cells without nuclei, and uh, when we see picture like that, we 100% uh, sure about necrosis in this tissue. So also we may see some changes in cytoplasma. In cytoplasma we may see plasma coagulation, plasma rexis uh, with dividing of plasma to different particles and plasma lysis and plasma lysis is associated with autolysis of cell so we will see melting of cytoplasma and disappearing of cell also on this slide we may see stages of changes in nuclei so on this part we may see normal nuclei after it we will see condensation of chromatin and it will take two picture here so uh, we may see these dark spots in, in the nuclei, after it we will see uh, the dark spots outside of the nucleus, and after it we will see karyopycnosis. So we will see decrease of size of this nucleus. So please uh, match the size of this nuclei and this one. So 
here we may see huge normal nuclei and uh, healthy nuclei in healthy cell but here we will see decrease of its size and it becomes round and uh, take less uh, part of a cell after it we will see uh, dividing of nucleus to different fragments so we may see a bit fragments here and it will be stage of karyorexis and after it we will see cell without nuclear so it is stage of karyolysis macroscopical manifestation of necrosis may be different for example here we will see red uh, intestina and uh, here it will be hemorrhagic necrosis uh, like hemorrhagic infarct of intestine here we will see white infarction of a kidney and we will see these changes in this area we will discuss all of these morphological forms bit later so here we may see area of necrosis in the lungs according to classification there are a lot of different ways of classification so it may be uh, according to the mechanism direct and indirect also it may be according to the etiology and we have already talked about it according to morphology it may be coagulated necrosis and caliquated necrosis but one of the most important classification is clinical morphological classification of necrosis or clinical morphological forms of necrosis and according to these classifications there are caliquated or wet necrosis, coagulative or dry necrosis, infarction, gangrene and sequestrum. Caliquative necrosis are typical for tissues uh, which accumulates a lot of fluids inside of them. For example, it is brain and in brain the typical situation for development of caliquative necrosis. So we uh, know that in the brain the tissue couldn't uh, are really soft, they contain a lot of uh, fluids and uh, that's why in the necrotic area we will see just cavity with fluids and uh, in products of the lysis here also in the result of this necrosis we may see formation of the cyst of the brain like in this slide for example here also it is really important to remember our previous classes and when we discussed the mixed degeneration and sometimes patients with same morphological formation will stay alive and in the uh, wall of this cyst we may see some brown or rusty pigment hemocedrine for example coagulated necrosis coagulated necrosis against um, are typical for tissues which contain a lot of proteins and less fluids for example it may develop in the lungs in the muscles and uh, in some other tissues so uh, Coagulated necrosis could be divided into three groups or subtypes. Uh, it may be caseous or cheesy necrosis, it's typical for uh, some chronic uh, infectional diseases like syphilis and tuberculosis. Uh, the tissues become dry, whitish and crumbling. So there are a lot of different pieces of a necrotic tissue in the necrotic area. The second type of coagulative necrosis is fibrinoid necrosis and fibrinoid necrosis may be a result of fibrinoid swelling and all other types of degeneration of connective tissue. So we may see accumulation of fibrin and fibrinogen in the area of necrosis. The tissues become solid, way, uh, looks like white area with uh, solid consistent. And also it may be zankers or waxy necrosis and uh, it's typical for skeletal muscles uh, and um, but it develops not um, often it happens in uh, result of some acute infectional diseases for example in, tissue, in uh, typhus and sometimes we may see formation of waxy necrosis in case of, strom in, in case of traumas uh, the morphological view of tissues will be uh, like that. The tissues become solid. We have uh, 
um, shine on surface and uh, looks like voxy forms. So uh, sometimes you will see picture like that. So uh, the muscles uh, of uh, abdomen, uh, normal uh, part of muscle may look localized here, but in uh, place of voxy necrosis, we will see whitish area with uh, solid, consistent and shine. Uh, histologically, the manifestation of necrosis will be associated with uh, changes of morphology of a cell and changes of nuclei at first. So on this slide we may see normal tissues in the near part of the slide, for example here. So we may see nuclei in each of cell or the cells satellites and uh, strips on the surface of the muscle. In the necrotical area, we will see that morphology of the cells will be changed. Also, we couldn't see nucleus in the cells, and we may see uh, rare satellite cells here. So, all of these changes will be associated with necrosis. On this slide, we may see caseous necrosis in the lungs. So, Probably it is uh, tuberculosis, and one of the form of TB infection is caseous pneumonia. Uh, so we may see some cavities in the lung and some whitish crumbling substance in it. So this white crumbling substance is area of uh, caseous necrosis, for example. And in this slide also we may see one focus of cheesy necrosis here. Gangrene. Gangrene, it is a special type of necrosis, which is typical only for organs which have connection with environment. And uh, where uh, gangrene has some speech special features, like contact with the environment, uh, also we should have infectional disease, and in the outcome of uh, this um, process we may see rejection of a part of organs and uh, there are different types of gangrene. Gangrene may be dry and in result of uh, dry gangrene we may see changes like mummification. So I hope you know what does mummy mean and uh, probably once in your life you may see the mummy and uh, the tissues will transform like that and they look like solid where you will have black color and um, uh, will have a dry uh, surface. Uh, all tissues in gangrene has a black color because of accumulation of special salts uh, and the name of this salt is uh, um, sulfatis of iron and in result of sulfatis of iron formation we will see black color on surface of all tissues. Also, it may be moist gangrene, and moist gangrene will be associated with uh, accumulation and addition of some suppurative inflammation. The uh, tissues become uh, accumu will start accumulated with fluids, and uh, the tissues becomes wet. Uh, also, they will have uh, black color, uh, they increased of size and uh, looks really dramatically. And anaerobic gangrene. Anaerobic gangrene associated with some special flow. Uh, for example, it may be associated with um, uh, accumulation of um, clostridium in the wound, uh, and um, we will see uh, anaerobic gangrene here. Uh, the anaerobic gangrene, gangrene characterized by the disgusting smell and um, the smell of uh, uh, bad meat, for example, uh, so it will be associated with metabolism of clostridium and some other type of microorganism. Also, it may uh, gangrene may be bad sore, and bad sore it is a result of um, bad medical care. And if you have a patient with uh, a really um, deep injury of brain or patient in coma, uh, you should uh, 
take them special care and this special care will be associated with uh, special movements in the bed of this patient you should uh, change their position in the bed once in one hour and you should make some movements in all of their joints uh, like a prophylactic of bed so so on this slide we may see dragon green of a tone on this slide we may see a dragon green of a leg so we may see black tissues uh, on the uh, lower part of a leg so and um, here we will see uh, moist gangrene so we may see formation of bubbles here the tissues become black um, and uh, accumulate some fluids here uh, gangrene of the um, intestine here intestine become black uh, and is this example of moist gangrene again because uh, the tissues becomes wet and uh, uh, looks like wet so here we may see uh, dry gangrene again so we may see black tissues here and um, mm, solid solid soft uh, solid tissues and solid dry tissues and one of example of bed sores bed sores form, uh, forms in the near part of the body in case of bad medical care and if the patient lay on one position for more to, uh, a lot of time we may see formation uh, or some pathological process like that so gangrene is one of the most dangerous processes cause the intoxication so high here and may lead to uh, death of the patient. So it is necessary to uh, take a good medical helping here. The, sec uh, the next type of uh, necrosis is sequestration. And the sequestration, it is a special type of necrosis which is not subject to the influence of hydrolytic ferments. So uh, most of our tissues could be slowed by uh, our leukocytes and macrophages and production products of these um, of these hydrolysis could be uh, resolved and uh, you know, may have great uh, and may be re replaced by connective tissue. But for example, our bones couldn't and in place uh, in case of uh, fracture or with um, a lot of fragments of bones we may see formation of sequestration and uh, the uh, bone fragment uh, surrounded by the separative inflammation and uh, in the result of that we will see formation of a um, uh, ways of sub we will see uh, formation of sequestrum and one of the most important uh, type of again of necrosis is infarction and infarction it is a type of necrosis which is uh, associated with uh, some vascular etiology so most of all it have uh, it's happened in result of thrombosis or blockage of vessels it may be associated with embolism with spasm of vessels and uh, mostly it happens in life important organs there are some different forms of infarction it may be wedge shaped infarction uh, which characterized for organs with the main type of branching of blood vessels so when we may see one main uh, one main vessel and uh, which divides to some other sub vessels uh, it is typical for spleen kidney and lungs uh, in irregular form of infarct uh, which observed in organs with a loose type of blood supply and an abundance of anastomosis like myocardium and brain in appearance uh, a fact can be white ischemic red hemorrhagic and also it may be white with hemorrhagic area the form and type of infarction depend upon the originality of the vascular system of the body and of an organ and its structure and functional features uh, we should discuss some 
most important organs where infarct may happen. So, a few more often atherosclerosis and hypertension we may see uh, in ischemical cerebral infarction. And the immediate cause of this process will be uh, thrombosis and thromboembolism. Macroscopically, in the center we will see a uh, flabby consistent of grayish color. Uh, we will see center of uh, gray softening. And we have already uh, watched the uh, slide about, it, about the necrosis in the brain, for example, here. So we will see some area of necrosis, which, which is huge. And in the center of it, we will see area of rejection. And uh, this area associated with lesions of tissues, like here and here. So all of these uh, manifestations will be associated with changes in the brain uh, blood supply. The most common cause of uh, it is thromboembolism if we talk about this chemical infarction of the spleen. Macroscopically, the center of triangle shape, white, uh, dryish, dense consistent, uh, the base turned into the capsule and uh, turned the capsule. Capsula in the area of infarction is root covered with fibrinose layers. Uh, and one of the most important type of infarct is infarct is a white infarct with a hemorrhagic area, and it happens in the myocardium and kidneys. In myocardium infarction, we may see macroscopically. We will see that in the muscles of left or right ventricle, we will see really uh, reclaimed uh, area uh, and uh, the center of this area will be white but on the periphery we will see accumulation of the blood and uh, we will see that in the necrosis zone there are a lot of cardiomyocytes uh, without nucleus and the absence of nucleus will be associated with disappearing uh, with kind of stage of chiralysis and, and it is really important to note that the stage of chiralysis happens only after 24 or 18 hours after the necrosis starts or begins. And uh, also we will see disintegration of cytoplasm and uh, we will see plasma rectus here. On the periphery of necrosis we will see formation of demarcation uh, zone of inflammation. So. As a result to necrosis, we will see formation of some uh, protective reaction of our organism. Our organisms try to uh, border, uh, make a border between healthy and dead or necrotic tissues, and it happens through the inflammation. So, and uh, we will see a lot of leukocytes here and uh, in few days we will see formation of granulation tissue and in a few weeks we will see formation of connective tissue in the place of myocardial infarction. Uh, the infarction of kidney has a triangle form uh, which uh, based on the capsula and looks like a uh, red or white area with red color and only the controls of glomeruli and tubes we may see on the histological level. Uh, also, we will see cells without nuclei. Uh, also, we will see some uh, strange lens pink masses. Uh, and uh, on the periphery, we again will see the zone of demarcation inflammation. The hemorrhagic or red infarction, typical for lungs, and we have already watched the lungs with the mm, hemorrhagic infarct. Uh, the necrotic area has a triangle form or rounded form, uh, and uh, the tissues become red or cherry color. And uh, the mechanism of its development uh, associated with conditions of congestive clitora and close of the branch of the plume pulmonary arteries. Mostly it may be associated with thromboembolism of um, lung artery. Uh, also it may be uh, blood from the bronchial artery rushes through the anastomosis under the great pressure into the areas of necrosis. 
white wild capillary disruption and the red blood cell shock. So here we may see that in the lungs, first of all, we may see is chemical infarct in the first stage, and in the second uh, step of this develop, we will see uh, hemorrhage and soaking of this area. Microscopically, I have already described this area. Microscopically, we will see necrotical lung tissue uh, and a lot of erythrocytes between them. There are two stages of infarction. Uh, necrotic and uh, necrosis and organization and it's typical for all organs uh, we will see that at the first stage stage of necrosis which uh, takes something about 48 hours uh, in different tissues it will take different time uh, the middle time is 24 hours when we will see some changes of the nucleus changes of the um, cells and uh, uh, the first 24 hours, sometimes we couldn't see anything in the place of infarct. But after 24 hours, we will see disappearing of nucleus and something about it. The stage of organization starts after three days. And it sta uh, starts from the formation of granulation tissue. The granulation tissue is this young connective tissue and in result of the uh, or growing of um, connective tissue and its development, we will see formation of connective tissue in the place of infarct. And it will be replacement of necrotic tissue to uh, connective one. So here we will see a myocardium infarct in the stage of, uh, in the stage of uh, connective tissue. So we will see uh, replacement of necrotic tissue by the uh, connective tissue. So we will see this area, white area here. Here we will see necrotical area, a white area, and in the periphery of it we will see hemorrhages like that. Here we may see spleen and uh, white necrosis of the spleen. It has triangle form and we have already described it a bit previous. And uh, the necrosis of the kidney, also triangle form. We may see uh, hemorrhagic on its periphery. So it is a white necrosis with hemorrhages. And uh, we may see hemorrhagic infarct in the liver. Histologically, we will see some changes in the tissues. For example, here we will see uh, lungs, so we may see some uh, healthy lung tissue in this part of the slide. And also we will see hemorrhagic soaking here, so we will see accumulation of a lot of erythrocytes in the lung tissue. Outcomes of necrosis may be different and uh, some of them are favorable, but some of them unfavorable. So, favorable type of outcome is encapsulation, organization and calcification. So, in case of encapsulation, we will see formation of uh, connective tissue border uh, surround the necrotical area. In case of organization, we will see replacement of necrotic tissue by the connective one. Uh, in case of calcification and incrustation and acidification, we will see an accumulation of calcium salts in the necrotic area. So, all other uh, outcomes of necrosis are unfavorable. So, sequestration. So, sequestration we have already discussed today. It is a um, uh, formation of some fragments which couldn't be uh, reslowed by our organism and formation of separative inflammation here. The uh, rejection with formation of ulcers and cavities are also um, unfavorable. Most typical for lungs and for gastrointestinal tract, for example. Here we will see formation of cavities in the lungs so decreasing of uh, lung surface, uh, respiratory surface of the lungs and uh, will lead to 
uh, breathing incidents, for example. Also, the, this formation may be associated with the secondary bleedings. Uh, the next outcome is purulent fusion, and in the uh, case of it, we will see formation of separative inflammation in place of necrosis, and uh, this separative inflammation will lead to increasing of necrotic area. Uh, that cyst formation typical for brain tissues, for example, and rejection typical for gangrene. Rejection, it is an, like auto-amputation, for example, it's mm, closer to this Term. Here we will see replacement by connective tissue. So this is a muscle cell, uh, probably heart muscle, and here we may see young connective tissue here. Uh, again, we will see outcome of uh, outcome of a huge myocardium infarct. Here we will see. Uh, huge myocardial infarction area and in place of it we will see formation of um, fibrotic tissue or connective tissue. So this whitish color, it is a connective tissue here. But uh, the formation of connective tissue will be associated with a decrease of uh, functional activity of the heart. So we may see the mm, level of uh, muscles here and the muscles here will take something about 2 millimeters, but here we may see 2 centimeters, so in 10, uh, 10, 10 times less. Uh, here we will see formation of cysts and rejection, auto-amputation of fragments. The next type of cell death is apoptosis. And apoptosis, it is a genetically programmed cell death in the living organism. And um, against of necrosis, this process is normal and couldn't be discussed like a pathological process. Uh, it, uh, for um, apoptosis, we should have same special conditions, which first of all should be associated with ending of life circle of a cell. Uh, mostly it is associated with uh, um, some um, stopping of uh, functional activity in result of ending of embryogenesis, for example, it's some additional organs of embryo. Uh, sometimes uh, it may be associated with uh, hormonal response tissues, uh, it may, may be associated with involution of hormone defense organs after reduction of the effects of same hormones. For most of all, it is uh, associated with sexual glands in elderly patients. It may be associated with uh, decrease of memory glands after the lactation period and something about it. The stages of apoptosis are uh, associated with uh, same changes which we may see in necrosis, but uh, the different is the fourth stage. So the first stage is chromatin condensation, fragmentation of nuclease, formation of apoptotic bodies. So the, it is a first difference. So in case of necrosis, we will see autolysis, but here we will see uh, formation of apoptic bodies. And apoptic bodies, it is a fragments of cytoplasma without uh, inflammatory activity and these apoptotic bodies may be phagocytes by neighbor cells and phag uh, phagoso phagocytes also. Uh, you should know the difference between apoptosis and necrosis. So, uh, I will tell you only about apoptosis and in necrosis we will see some um, against picture. For example, in the apoptosis, we will see uh, prevalence in the single cells. Uh, in the biochemical changes, we will see an activation of endonuclease. But in necrosis, we will see uh, activation of lysosomal ferments. The cell membrane is undamaged in the apoptosis, and uh, the cells is normal there are not uh, any mm, other alterative factor. 
Inflammation is not typical for apoptosis, but it's developed in any case of necrosis. Morphologically, we will see cell corrugation and condensation with chromatin consolidation. In the necrosis, we will see swelling and lysis of cell. And the different ways of elimination of the products. In case of apoptosis, we will see phagocytosis by the neighborhood cell. In the necrosis, it should be phagocytosis by neutrophils and macrophages. And in the summary of our class, we should talk about the death, about well, general death of our organism. So death, it is a stopping of all vital function of an organ of organism, and uh, the death it is irreversible process. In result of that, the person or the human body becomes to cadaver. So after the death. Uh, the human is not person, he is cadaver. According to short classification, uh, there are natural and intimately death. The natural death takes place in senile person as a result of physiological wear of organism. And uh, there are some scientific research that um, tells that uh, natural or physiologic death possible only after 150 years of life. So I have never heard about uh, the person who lived more than 120 years, but natural death could uh, happen only after 150 years. Uh, ultimately, uh, untimely death may be divided on violent and non-violent. Violent death associated with some um, accidents like murders, suicides, traumas, car accidents, for example, and something uh, about it. Non-violent death associated with the diseases. And in our department, we should pay more attention to this type of a death. There are uh, stages of dying. There are five stages of dying. The first stage is shock, coma, and collapse, and it's called like preorganal death. Uh, here we will see the patient in coma, for example, with um, decrease of, uh, of, of motional activities. We will see after its terminal pause, then the uh, heart, the breathing, and uh, all muscles uh, will now have any actions. And after it, we will see agony. In case of agony, we will see hypermotional activities in all muscles. Uh, the person uh, start um, will have. Um, movements in all muscles, in all organs. And after it, after agony, we will see clinical death. The clinical death, it is it is reversible process which associated with uh, stopping of vital functions of a body. So we will see stopping of heart activity, stopping of breathing, and stopping of mental activities. And after 15 minutes of clinical death, but sometimes we talk after 30 minutes of clinical death, a biological death develops. Clinical death characterized by absence of breathing, absence of palpitation, absence of pulse, uh, lasts for uh, 15 or 20 uh, or 30 minutes, and um, here uh, we should make a reanimation, and reanimation is possible. That's why you should try to uh, restore all of, all of these functions in the period of 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we will see death of brain, and it is um, not necessary to try to uh, return this person to life. Because in case of the day of death of the brain, 
we lose the person who was with this human. And biological death is characterized by appearance in the true or deaf scenes. Early cadaveric effects, which uh, develops in first two days, and late cadaveric effects, which happens after two days. The early cadaveric effects associated with Villaglazov symptom or symptom of cat eye. So you may see it in the slide. So in this part of the slide. So we should take uh, to our. Um, we should take uh, the eye of a person and scratch it. And if the uh, iris will change its form, it will be a positive Villaglazov symptom. The second uh, cadaveric effect is uh, cadaveric spots. The cadaveric spots, it is in a blood accumulation in near part of the body. And uh, the Typical characteristics of cadaveric spots uh, will be associated with their migration. So, we will see uh, the migration of cadaveric spots if we turn the body or the cadaver to another uh, side. So, we will see, for example, here we will see cadaveric spots in the, uh, in the back, but if we turn this person to the abdomen, in half of hour, we will see migration of these spots to abdomen. Rigor mortis associated with construction of the muscles, and um, all muscles will contract, and uh, in it happens after two hours after death, and li, uh, and uh, the uh, region uh, will um, disappear after two days. Also, we will see disappearing uh, or drying up of all mucous membranes. And also we will see starting of autolysis. And autolysis became from the intestine, because uh, in the intestine we will see a lot of microorganisms. Late, late cadaveric effects associated with destroying, like putrefaction and uh, destruction by incest and animals and also it may be preserving like mummification pit tanning uh, saponification and corpse freezing so it was all theoretical part of our lesson uh, thank you for your attention and goodbye